Bismillah wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillah All praises be to Allah Azza wa Jal Where with His blessings we are able to once again meet Ramadan Especially in these trying times Where as we know Many are unfortunately not as blessed And have been returned back to Him I am Ustaz Mohsin from Kampung Siglap Mos, and insha'Allah, for this month of Ramadan, I will be giving a series of short tazkiras, short reminders on the topic of me, COVID, and God. As I'm pretty sure everyone is aware, as we now find ourselves in this blessed month, most, if not all of us, are ever trying to get closer to God through multiplying our acts of worship towards Him. However, with COVID-19 still up in the air, the doors to our mosques are closed and we are mostly confined to our own homes. How then can we achieve this by ourselves, on our own, when previously we have always counted on going to the mosque during Ramadan to uplift ourselves spiritually? Firstly, it will be good for us to ponder on the promises given to us by Allah and His Prophet Muhammad wasallam with regards to fasting in the month of Ramadan, such that we may be more spiritually motivated in facing it. The first of such a promise, my dear brothers and sisters, can actually be found in the hadith where the Prophet Muhammad wasallam have said, In paradise, there is a gate called Arrayan, through which only those who observe fasting will enter on the day of resurrection and no one else will enter through it. It will be called out. Where are those who observe fasting? So they will stand up and proceed towards it. When the last person among them enters, the gate will be closed, and then no one will enter through that gate. Hadith Mutafaq Alay, narrated by Bukhari and Muslim. So just imagine, my dear brothers and sisters, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have actually prepared a name gate, a gate with its own name in heaven, specifically for those who fast. Whereas the other gates of heaven are simply named after the various different acts of worship, like the gate of Salah for those who pray, the gate of Jihad for those who went for Jihad, and so on. Such is the greatness of fasting. And if that isn't enough, the Prophet went on to promise Allah's protection for those who fast. As we can see in the hadith where the Prophet Muhammad wasallam have said, Every slave of Allah who observe fasting for one day for the sake of Allah, Allah will draw his face further from the hellfire to the extent of a distance to be covered in 70 years. Subhanallah. Just imagine, for those who observe fasting for just a day, Allah will actually protect him, pull him away from the hellfire to the extent of a distance that can only be covered in 17 years, in 70 years. Are we even able to imagine that? What more than if we fast throughout the whole of Ramadan? How much will Allah protect us then from the hellfire? And as if that isn't enough to motivate ourselves to fast in this Ramadan, or to observe other acts of worship this Ramadan, the Prophet ﷺ went on to paint for us a picture of the ambience of Ramadan in his hadith. When Ramadan begins, the gates of heaven are open, the gates of hell are closed, and the devils are chained. So now then, try to imagine how easy Allah has actually made it for us to fast in the month of Ramadan, or in fact to do any other acts of worship in the month of Ramadan, by chaining up the devils. If the devil's gone, we are more inclined to do good and less inclined to actually do evil. We are still tempted to sin and disobey, yes, but it's simply a chance for us to actually reflect back upon ourselves, to do some muhasabah and truly choose to return back to God. After all, at the end of the day, each one of us will be responsible for our own sins and deeds. Allah has said in the Quran in Surah An-Najm verse 38, Allah taziru wa ziratun wizra ukhra that no bearer of burdens will bear the burden of another. Each one of us will only handle our own sins. And yes, we will not be able to blame anyone else for the sins that we do, not the devils, nor our friends. 
and especially for us today being locked in our own homes, it is the best time for us to truly reflect upon ourselves. For this time, we do not have the devil to blame for our misdeeds, nor our friends, nor anyone else for that matter. This is also the most wonderful of opportunity for us to get closer to Allah, together with our family. And indeed, priority should have been given to calling our family to God in the first place. As Allah have ordained upon us in Surah At-Tahrim, verse number 6, Ya ayyuhallazina amanu, ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Oh, you have belief, protect yourselves and your families from the fire. And what better time than now for us to apply this ayat into our lives? We are now able to take our time reading the Quran together, sharing knowledge of this deen with our family members, constantly reminding each other in the family to get closer to God and so on and so forth. Or we can even look up on religious videos to watch together that you may benefit from it together with your family. As I'm pretty sure there are many asatizas, many scholars out there who are sharing snippets of knowledge for the masses to produce at leisure. And if we are still down, thinking of how we are not able to have our Ramadan in the mosque, then I ask of you, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, to take a moment and ask yourselves, did Allah make it a condition to have our Ramadan in the mosque for us to be forgiven, for us to have a fulfilling Ramadan? Is that the condition for us to have a fulfilling Ramadan, for us to be in the mosque? The answer is, of course, no. Did the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ridwanullahu Alaihim Ajma'in, read their tarawih during Ramadan in the mosque? Once again, my dear listeners, the answer is no. They only pray in the mosque, being led by the Prophet, only for a couple of nights or so. And then, the Prophet did not go out to lead them in the tarawih for the next night, and instead went out to them in the morning, and said of how, subhanallah, he have seen them gathering in anticipation of doing the tarawih with him again. However, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, for his compassionate soul, feared that tarawih will actually be made compulsory were they to do it together every night in the mosque. Hence, he did it at home, and following up from that, so did the rest of the companions. They pray their taraweh at home with their families. Now, if you wanting to do your taraweh at home, then fear that you may not have memorized the Quran. Well, Allah has actually made it easy for us by telling us to only read that which is easy for us when we pray. Allah said in the Quran, فَقْرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنَ Quran." Then read from that which is easy for you from the Quran. If it is just al-ikhlas, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ That comes easy for you then, then read it. Allah will reward you immensely for that. May whatever I have said today help to get us a little bit more spiritually for this Ramadan and may we benefit from it no matter how little, insha'Allah. Aqulu kawli haza wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum wa atubi ilaik. Alhaqum mirabbikum fala takuna namna al-muntarin. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubi ilaik. Sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته